Today is day three for the Come Follow Me study for this week, January 15th through the 21st. Come and partake of the fruit, 1 Nephi 6-10. through 10. Wednesday, January 17th, 2024. 1 Nephi 8, 19-28. The Parable of the Path. 1 Nephi 8, 19. And I beheld a rod of iron, and it extended along the bank of a river, and led to the tree by which I stood. 1 Nephi 15. And they said unto me, what meaneth the rod of iron which our father saw that led to the tree? And I said unto them that it was the word of God, and whoso would hearken unto the word of God, and would hold fast unto it, they would never perish, neither would the temptations and the fiery darts of the adversary overpower them unto blindness, to lead them away to destruction. Wherefore I, Nephi, did exhort them to give heed unto the word of the Lord, yea, I did exhort them with all the energies of my soul and with all the faculty which I possessed, that they would give heed to the word of God and remember to keep his commandments always in all things. In Revelation 2, 26 and 27, it says, And to him who overcometh and keepeth my commandments unto the end, to him will I give power over many kingdoms. And he shall rule them with, instead of an iron rod, it changes it to the word of God. President Ezra Taft Benson said, We must engage in activities that bring spiritual power. I speak of such activities as immersing ourselves in the scriptures. There is a power that flows into our lives when we read and study the scriptures on a daily basis that cannot be found in any other way. Elder Merrill J. Bateman said, A casual, infrequent exposure to the scriptures will generally not open the door to the whisperings of the Spirit or provide insights. There are certain blessings obtained when one searches the scriptures. As a person studies the words of the Lord, and obeys them, he or she draws closer to the Savior and obtains a greater desire to live a righteous life. The power to resist temptation increases, and spiritual weaknesses are overcome. Spiritual wounds are healed. According to the vision, the only way to reach the tree and become a permanent partaker of the fruit was to continually hold fast to the iron rod. What was the rod of iron? Nephi defined it as the word of God. The words of the living prophets and the scriptures which point people to Christ. Nephi further stated that those who hearken and held fast to the word of God would never perish. Holding fast to the iron rod builds faith in Christ and his work. President Benson, in April 1986 General Conference, expressed these thoughts. However diligent we may be in other areas, certain blessings are to be found only in the scriptures, only in coming to the word of the Lord and holding fast to it, as we make our way through the mist of darkness to the tree of life. Elder George Q. Cannon said, Though impenetrable darkness should surround us, we ought, as a people and as individuals, to cling to that truth which the Lord has revealed concerning his work, cling to the priesthood, cling to the iron rod, which is the word of God, and the word of God comes through the priesthood. Let each one say, I will serve God, no matter what happens, I will cling to his priesthood which God has put in his church to govern it, no matter what the consequences may be. That is the integrity to which we cherish and which we should teach to our children. Unless we do, we will never accomplish that which God designs for us. 1 Nephi 8.20 And I also beheld a straight and narrow path which came along by the rod of iron, even to the tree by which I stood, and it also led by the head of the fountain unto a large and spacious field, as if it had been a world. Matthew 7. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Doctrine and Covenants 132. Straight is the gate, and narrow the way, that leadeth unto the exaltation and continuation of the lives. And few there be that find it, because ye receive me not in the world, neither do ye know me. Broad is the gate, and wide is the way, that leadeth to the deaths, and many there are that go in thereat, because they receive me not, neither do they abide in my law. 1 Nephi 31 And now, my beloved brethren, after ye have gotten into this straight and narrow path, I would ask if all is done. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for ye have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ. 
with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save. Wherefore ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope, and a love of God and of all men. Wherefore, if ye shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end, behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. Elder Neil A. Maxwell said, The straight and narrow path, though clearly marked, is a path, not a freeway, not an escalator. Indeed, there are times when the only way the straight and narrow path can be followed is on one's knees, and we are to help each other along the path. Elder Delbert L. Stapley said, To enter the straight gate implies obedience to gospel requirements, and the narrow way that leads to life connotes additional requirements, rights, and ordinances for all who desire salvation and exaltation. I should like to ask, what is the straight gate spoken of by the Savior by which we should enter? All who have repented and then been baptized and received the Holy Ghost by authorized servants of God have entered in by the straight gate. The narrow way can only be followed by obedience and faithfulness to all the sacred ordinances and requirements of the higher gospel plan obtained in the holy temples of God. President Joseph Fielding Smith said, Mark you, this word straight is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T and not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. While no doubt that path which leads into the presence of God is straight, it is also straight, which means that those who enter into it will find it restricted. It is narrow. They cannot take with them that which does not apply or which does not belong to the kingdom of God. All such things must be left behind when we enter into this narrow way which leads into the presence of God where we can receive eternal life. Few there be that find it. Elder Bruce McConkie said, The course leading to eternal life is both straight and straight. It is straight because it has an invariable direction. Always it is the same. There is no diversions, crooked paths, or tangents leading to the kingdom of God. It is straight because it is narrow and restricted, a course where full obedience to the full law is required. Straightness has reference to direction, straightness to width. The gate is straight. The path is both straight and straight. Thus, by entering in at the straight gate, which is repentance and baptism, a person gets on the straight and narrow path, which leads to eternal life. Jesus Christ taught that he is the only path or the way that will lead to the Father. Elder Lowell M. Snow of the Seventy testified of the constant direction the Savior provides. Life is full of many intersecting roads and trails. There are so many paths to follow, so many voices calling out low here and low there. There is such a variety and volume of media flooding our personal space, most of it intent on hurting us down a path that is broad and traveled by many. When pondering which of these voices to listen to, or which road among the many is right, have you ever asked yourself, as Joseph Smith did, what is to be done? Who of all these voices and roads is right, or are they all wrong together? If any one of them be right, which is it, and how shall I know it? My witness to you is that Jesus Christ continues to mark the path, lead the way, and define every point on our journey. His path is straight and narrow and leads toward light and life and endless day. You can also search the following verses to learn about four groups of people Lehi saw. Elder Merrill J. Bateman said, Lehi beheld four groups of people traveling in different directions, some toward the tree and others away from it. Group 1 people who start on the path to the tree but are lost in the mist. 1 Nephi 8.21 And I saw numberless concourses of people, many of whom were pressing forward, that they might obtain the path which led unto the tree by which I stood. Doctrine and Covenants 123 There are many yet on the earth among all sects, parties, and denominations who are blinded by the subtle craftiness of men, whereby they lie in wait to deceive and who are only kept from the truth because they know not where to find it. 1 Nephi 8, 22 and 23 And it came to pass that they did come forth, and commence in the path which led to the tree. And it came to pass that there arose a mist of darkness, yea, even an exceedingly great mist of darkness, insomuch that they who had commenced in the path did lose their way, that they wandered off and were lost. 
1 Nephi 12, And the mists of darkness are the temptations of the devil, which blindeth the eyes and hardeneth the hearts of the children of men, and leadeth them away into broad roads, that they perish and are lost. Elder Merrill J. Bateman said, The first group found the path and began the journey toward the tree. Along the way they encountered a mist of darkness which caused them to wander off and become lost. Elder David A. Budnar said, In 1 Nephi 8, 21-23, we learn about the first group of people who pressed forward and commenced in the path that led to the tree of life. However, as the people encountered the mist of darkness which represents the temptations of the devil, they lost their way, wandered off, and were lost. Notice that no mention is made in these verses of the rod of iron. Those who ignore or treat lightly the word of God do not have access to that divine compass which points the way to the Savior. Consider that this group obtained the path and pressed forward, exhibiting a measure of faith in Christ and spiritual conviction. But they were diverted by the temptations of the devil and were lost. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland said, Our times are turbulent and difficult. We see wars internationally and distress domestically. Neighbors all around us face personal heartaches and family sorrows. Legions know fear and troubles of a hundred kinds. This reminds us that when those mists of darkness enveloped the travelers in Lehi's vision of the tree of life, it enveloped all of the participants, the righteous as well as the unrighteous, the young along with the elderly, the new convert and seasoned member alike. In that allegory, all faced opposition and travail, and only the rod of iron, the declared word of God, can bring them safely through. We all need that rod. We all need that word. No one is safe without it. For in its absence, any can fall away into forbidden paths and be lost, as the record says. How do I avoid being blinded by the mists of darkness? Elder Jeffrey R. Hahn of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles taught, it is imperative to note that this mist of darkness descends on all the travelers, the faithful and the determined ones, the elect, we might even say, as well as the weaker and ungrounded ones. The principal point of the story is that the successful travelers resist all distractions, including the lure of forbidden paths, enduring taunts from the vain and proud who have taken those paths. Group 2 People who make it to the tree and taste of the fruit by holding onto the rod, but fall away when they are mocked. 1 Nephi 8.24 And it came to pass that I beheld others pressing forward, and they came forth and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron, and they did press forward through the mist of darkness, clinging to the rod of iron, even until they did come forth and partake of the fruit of the tree. What words and phrases describe an individual's faithfulness to the word of God? 1 Nephi 8.25, And after they had partaken of the fruit of the tree, they did cast their eyes about, as if they were ashamed. Doctrine and Covenants 1, They seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness, but every man walketh in his own way, and after the image of his own God, whose image is in the likeness of the world, and whose substance is that of an idol, which waxeth old, and shall perish in Babylon, even Babylon the great, which shall fall. Elder Merrill J. Bateman said, Others, in group two, press forward, caught hold of the rod of iron, pressed through the mist by clinging to the rod, arrived at the tree, and partook of the fruit. Even though they tasted the sweetness of the fruit, they did not persist. They succumbed to the mocking and finely dressed people who inhabited a great and spacious building across the river. The scoffing and finger pointing of the well-dressed caused the second group to become ashamed, and they drifted away into Forbidden Pass and were lost. Elder David A. Bednar said, In 1 Nephi 8, 24 and 25, we read about a second group of people who obtained the straight and narrow path that led to the Tree of Life. This group did press forward through the mist of darkness, clinging to the rod of iron, even until they did come forth and partake of the fruit of the tree. However, as the finely dressed occupants of the great and spacious building mocked this second group of people, they were ashamed and fell away into forbidden paths and were lost. Please notice that this group is described as clinging to the rod of iron. It is significant that the second group pressed forward with faith and commitment. They also had the added blessing of the rod of iron, and they were clinging to it. However, as they were confronted with persecution and adversity, they fell away into forbidden paths and were lost. 
Even with faith, commitment, and the word of God, this group eventually was lost, perhaps because they only periodically read or studied or searched the scriptures. Clinging to the rod of iron suggests to me only occasional bursts of study or irregular dipping rather than consistent, ongoing immersion in the Word of God. Group 3. People who desired the great and spacious building more than the tree. First Nephi 8.26 And I also cast my eyes round about and beheld on the other side of the river of water a great and spacious building, and it stood, as it were, in the air, high above the earth. First Nephi 11 And the multitude of the earth was gathered together, and I beheld that they were in a large and spacious building, like unto the building which my father saw. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me again, saying, Behold the world, and the wisdom thereof. Yea, behold, the house of Israel hath gathered together to fight against the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And it came to pass that I saw and bear record that the great and spacious building was the pride of the world. And it fell, and the fall thereof was exceedingly great. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thus shall be the destruction of all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, that shall fight against the twelve apostles of the Lamb. 1 Nephi 12 and the large and spacious building which thy father saw in vain imaginations, and the pride of the children of men, and a great and terrible gulf divided them, yea, even the word of the justice of the eternal God, and the Messiah, who is the Lamb of God, of whom the Holy Ghost beareth record, from the beginning of the world, until this time, and from this time henceforth and forever. President Ezra Taft Benson taught that pride is the universal sin, the great vice. The antidote for pride is humility. Meekness, submissiveness. Elder Gregory A. Schweitzer said, Over the many years that I have studied the story of Lehi's dream in the Book of Mormon, I have always thought of the great and spacious building as a place where only the most rebellious reside. The building was filled with people mocking and pointing at the faithful who had held on to the iron rod, which represented the word of God, and had made their way to the tree of life, which represents the love of God. Some could not bear up under the pressure of the people mocking them and wandered off. Others decided to join the mockers in the building. Did they not have the courage to speak boldly against the criticisms or messages of the world? They were not valiant in their testimony of Jesus Christ. As I watch the current world moving away from God, I think this building is growing in size. Many find themselves today wandering the halls of the great and spacious building, not realizing that they are actually becoming part of its culture. They often succumb to the temptations and the messages. We eventually find them mocking or chiming in with those who criticize or mock. For years, I thought the mocking crowd was making fun of the way the faithful lived their lives. But the voices from the building today have changed their tone and approach. Those who mock often try to drown out the simple message of the gospel by attacking some aspect of the church's history or offering pointed criticism of a prophet or other leader. They are also attacking the very heart of our doctrine and the laws of God, given since the creation of the earth. We, as disciples of Jesus Christ and members of his church, must never let go of that iron rod. We must let the clarion trumpet sound from our own souls. President Harold B. Lee said, Unfortunately, some are among us who claim to be church members, but are somewhat like the scoffers in Lehi's vision, standing aloft, and seemingly inclined to hold in derision the faithful who choose to accept church authorities as God's special witnesses of the gospel and as agents in directing the affairs of the church. Elder Neil A. Maxwell said, We see a few around us who simply cannot stand to be separated from the politically correct multitudes in the great and spacious building. These multitudes are in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers toward those who had come at and were partaking of the fruit. The finger of scorn has its own way of separating the faithful from those who have little or no faith. Like Lehi, the faithful in our time will endure the pointing fingers of scorn from the world and heed them not, even when the ironical fact is that some of these pointing fingers of scorn once grasped the iron rod. 1 Nephi 8.27 and it was filled with people, both old and young, both male and female, and their manner of dress was exceedingly fine, and they were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers toward those who had come at and were partaking of the fruit. Elder Merrill J. Bateman said, The third group of Lehi's vision felt their way towards the great and spacious building, 
they had little or no interest in searching for the tree or the life it provides. After entering the building, they joined the others in pointing the finger of scorn at Lehi and those eating the fruit. Lehi, Sariah, Sam, and Nephi did not heed the people in the large building, but Laman and Lemuel refused to travel the path toward the tree and partake of the fruit. This upset Lehi, as he feared that the two eldest sons would be cast off from the presence of the Lord. Nephi states that after Father Lehi had related all the words of the dream, he exhorted his older brothers, with all the feeling of a tender parent, that they would hearken to his words. The great and spacious building stands in opposition to the Savior, who is the tree of life. Dr. Glenn L. Pace of the Seventy contrasted the standards of God with the behaviors of the people in the great and spacious building. To those of you who are inching your way closer and closer to that great and spacious building, let me make it completely clear that the people in that building have absolutely nothing to offer except instant, short-term gratification, inescapably connected to long-term sorrow and suffering. The commandments you observe were not given by a dispassionate God to prevent you from having fun, but by a loving Father in heaven who wants you to be happy while you are living on this earth as well as in the hereafter. Compare the blessings of living the word of wisdom to those available to you if you choose to party with those in the great and spacious building. Compare the joy of intelligent humor and wit to drunken, silly, crude, loud laughter. Compare our faithful young women who still have a blush in their cheeks with those who, having long lost their blush, try to persuade you to join them in their loss. Compare lifting people up to putting people down. Compare the ability to receive personal revelation and direction in your life to being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Compare holding the priesthood of God with anything you see going on in that great and spacious building. Elder L. Tom Perry of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles warned that preoccupation with material possessions is a behavior typical of those in the great and spacious building. The current cries we hear coming from the great and spacious building tempt us to compete for ownership in the things of this world. We think we need a larger home with a three-car garage and a recreational vehicle parked next to it. We long for designer clothes, extra TV sets, all with DVDs, the latest model computers, and the newest car. Often these items are purchased with borrowed money without giving any thought to providing for our future needs. The result of all this instant gratification is overloaded bankruptcy courts and families that are far too preoccupied with their financial burdens. In Lehi's vision, the scorners and mockers ridiculed those who were partaking of the fruit, those who love God and want to serve him. Elder Neil A. Maxwell reminded us to hold up the shield of faith when scorners can be seen and heard from the great and spacious building. Let us expect that many will regard us indifferently. Others will see us as quaint or misled. Let us bear the pointing fingers which, ironically, belong to those finally who, being bored, find the great and spacious building to be a stale and cramped third-class hotel. Let us revile not the revilers, and heed them not. Instead, let us use our energy to hold up the shield of faith to quench the incoming fiery darts. 1 Nephi 8.28 And after they had tasted of the fruit, they were ashamed because of those that were scoffing at them, and they fell away into forbidden paths and were lost. Based on actual events as recorded in the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. And I beheld a rod of iron, and it extended along the bank of the river, and led to the tree by which I stood. And I also beheld a straight and narrow path, which came along by the rod of iron, even to the tree by which I stood. And it also led by the head of the fountain unto a large and spacious field, as if it had been a world. And I saw numberless concourses of people, many of whom were pressing forward, that they might obtain the path which led unto the tree. And it came
came to pass that there arose a mist of darkness, yea, even an exceedingly great mist of darkness, insomuch that they who had commenced on the path did lose their way, that they wandered off and were lost. I beheld others pressing forward, and they came forth and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron. And they did press forward through the mist of darkness, clinging to the rod of iron, even until they did come forth and partake of the fruit of the tree. held on the other side of the river of water, a great and spacious building, and it stood as it were in the air, high above the earth. And it was filled with people, both old and young, both male and female, and their manner of dress was exceedingly fine. And they were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers towards those who had come at and were partaking of the fruit. And after they had partaken of the fruit of the tree, they did cast their eyes about as if they were ashamed because of those that were scoffing at them. And they fell away into forbidden paths and were lost. Elder Neil A. Maxwell said, A few members of the church, alas, desert the cause. They are like one who abandons an oasis to search for water in the desert. Some of these few will doubtless become critics, and they will be welcomed into the great and spacious building. Henceforth, however, henceforth, however, so far as their theological accommodations are concerned, they are in a spacious but third-rate hotel, all dressed up, as the Book of Mormon says, exceedingly fine. They have no place to go except one day, hopefully, home. Sister Becky Craven said, The vision of the Tree of Life shows us how the effects of casualness can lead us away from the covenant path. The world is laden with distractions that can deceive even the elect, causing them to be casual in living their covenants, thus leading them near the tree, but not to it. If we are not careful in living our covenants with exactness, our casual efforts may eventually lead us into forbidden paths or to join with those who have already entered the great and spacious building. If not careful, we may even drown in the depths of a filthy river. There is a careful way and a casual way to do everything, including living the gospel. As we consider our commitment to the Savior, are we careful or casual? <laughs> 